Hello there Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be looking at a product called a Cardinal. Um, so the other day I posted this video, look hands on hands, um, I posted this video which was to do with a VCV, VM and Reason and to be honest I think really this is more to do with this particular ISA Link Pro. I think that's, that's kind of more of a play around with that to get things working. But I did make a comment in there that I didn't think that the VCV Rack Pro version, that's what the, the 99 or the $150, whatever it is nowadays, uh, to give you the VST version, I just didn't think it was quite worth it. And someone actually uh, wrote uh, in the comments that there's actually, uh, obviously, a uh, these two versions, a Cardinal and this C, uh, VC. This VC, uh, I had a quick read up on this, and that really reminded me of, um, I remember when Rack, 0.6 came out, there was a bridge version, and I've actually still got that. I've actually got a copy of um, 0.06 and of the bridge, so I can actually use um, VCV Rack as a plugin in Reason today, but in that version. Um, but I was more interested in this Cardinal version, so I've uh, actually gone off and downloaded it and had a little look, and I thought, well, let's make a little video about it. Um, and see what's what. I just realised, look, there's a new video about Alex Ball. I haven't watched that one yet. If you don't know that guy's channel, it's worth definitely checking out. So, what is Cardinal? Well, Cardinal is a fully fledged um, virtual modular synthesizer. But what they're trying to do with it is a, it's you know, it's a plugin. Uh, it's fully open sourced, and yes, it is based on VC the rack. Um, they kind of, I'm not saying they claim, you know, that they're not trying to step on VCV Rack's toes. They're just trying to say, well, this is a, for a different market from what VCV Rack is. I, they're trying to, I think, to aim this more at the door market. So they're trying to say it's fully, um, as I said, modular. Um, and down here, you can obviously read about it. It's trying to make a saying it's self-contained. Um, it is free, it is open source, whereas with VCV Rack, the pro version, the VST bit, is not open source. Um, so that's what they're trying to come up with. I will link in this particular uh, article so you can obviously have a read through. It's not like a massive article. Um, there's a few items in it and it just might be worth having a quick little uh, uh, read through, a little bit about Cardinal itself. But I'm going to go through the installation now. Um, and where we can get the files from and how we can get it installed and then we'll actually have a look at it. I've put the link in exactly where you can get all this software from but when you obviously get to this page um, you've got your Mac version and the version that we're interested in it will be this uh, Win64. We're not interested in the 32-bit version or anything else so these would be the two versions obviously that we'll be interested in. So this is the actual contents of that particular zip file. As you can see, there's loads of other versions in it. And again, the versions obviously for reason we're interested in would be the Cardinal um, FX and the Cardinal Synth VST. Um, obviously, VST3s are not really any point for us just yet. Um, in the near future, they will be. All you need to do is just copy that down into your normal VST location. However, what I'm going to say is um, I had a good old rummage through these two folders and basically rather than installing it um, to two separate folders, I've actually grabbed one of the folders and, and renamed it. Uh, there we go. I just, I just called it uh, cardinal.vst and I dropped the, uh, the synth version into the so I've just downloaded the FS version. So basically this resource directory is 100% the same in both locations. So you could have it as two separate directories, but it's using up, like, I think it's only like 115, 120 meg, which isn't too much. But then I do loads and loads of backups. So there's all that room it'll take up and just, yeah, it just takes up a little bit extra time. So just find that nice and tidy. So you don't actually have to copy both of them other folders down, as I say, both of these folders here. So as I say, if you go inside them, you see there's a resource and that's how they look. But they can actually, you only have to copy one lot of resource down and just copy your DLLs down and uh, get that into Reason. So once we've actually got that into Reason, this is how it looks, uh, quite straightforward. This is the synth version. And uh, let's quickly pull up the uh, FX version. Uh, where is it? It's there. Bom, bom, bom. Um, so from the front, they actually look the, the pretty similar, but when we come to the back, there is actually a slight difference. Um, 
and the difference between these um, unlike my other VSTs which I found which have both, both version is there's no audio in um, it's only on the effects version that you get an audio in so for this particular exercise I think what I'm actually going to do I'm going to get rid of that one and I'm going to just purely use the um, the FX version now there's obviously a couple of downers about using the FX version and the main one being is uh, players so if I was wanted to use a player obviously I can't just grab a player and stick it on top of this because it's um, well it's an effect I can actually give this MIDI focus so there we go I've given that MIDI focus let's zoom in again so I've given that MIDI focus and if I play my keyboard here you go, see, we can actually obviously get notes and date, gate data in. So what I can do though is just right click, combine it up. Now this is the important step. Got to click on the receive notes. Oh, make sure I've highlighted it first. There we go, receive notes. We can now drop some players on top of this. So let's go and grab a couple of players. Let's, uh, let's bump one of them on and we'll have a play with that a little bit later. And let's go for scales and chords because I like a scales and chords. And Let's just turn everything on for a bit of fun. Yay, so if I hit the key, hopefully you get loads of notes up. Yay, good, that's what I want. Um, so let's actually go and build something, shall we? Let's have a look and see what we've got. So it's opened up on the other window. Let me go and drag that across. Here we go. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. There we are. And nice thing about this there's lots of zoom actually built into the program itself so we can obviously make it quite a bit larger here and is it the alt key to scroll around yes it is i hold the alt key down um if you right mouse click you go into the window which will show you all the modules you've got loaded again there's another zoom pro zoom in here so you can actually make it larger so this is all the stuff it comes down with. And again, if I zoom in even further, you can see it comes down with 622 modules. So it's actually a very extensive range of modules. If anything, if you're just starting out, you're gonna probably find this is probably a little bit overwhelming because there is actually so much in it. And I would semi recommend maybe just focusing on a smaller area. Um, I've had a quick look through, there is some nice manufacturers in here as well who have been written some stuff um, and there's all kinds of bits and bobs um, and yeah so I think what we should do is we should build ourselves saying if anyone knows because I don't know VCV rack brilliantly I you know I use it I know how to get around it um, one of my bugbears with it is this is obviously where we can choose modules but I want to come along here and go okay I'm gonna I want to choose that module and hold down a key so I can choose other modules as well. And I just find I don't really get that option. You have to click here and then you have to right click again and then you're back here again. And if I was all the way, where was I scroll to? I've lost where I scroll to now. And you know, so you, you end up going back and forth. Thankfully, um, they've got, you know, quite a bit of tagging. So you can obviously go through things. They can obviously do stuff by um, the brand as well. Um, but yeah, it does sort of, it's just a bit of a bugbear that, and I wish I could sort of sort of um, multi-click several things at once. So if we're gonna quickly create ourselves a sound, or there's a VCF, I'll definitely grab that. Let's see what else I can go and grab. I'm gonna want myself a VCO somewhere. Is that gonna be further down? See, it's not even in alphabetical order. Can I sort it? Sort by last updated. Do, 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 most used brand, module name. I don't know if module name will help. Let's have a look. Does it put that put with the VCV at the bottom? No, oh yes, here we go. We've got ourselves a VCO. Yep, we'll have that. And uh, let's have a look. A VCM, a VCM. Oh, a voltage control mixer. Okay, that's fair enough. So great, we've got ourselves one of them, we've got ourselves a filter. Ah, oh, we need some envelopes, don't we? So, as I say, it's not exactly in a, a brilliant order, but there must be some envelopes here somewhere, I reckon. If not, I'll go and do another search. 
Oh, can I search on top of a search then? So let's see. Um, all right, what have we got over here? I've got, I've got an attack decay. That looks good enough for me. Grab that. In fact, I want two of them. So what is it? Right click and duplicate A. So we can duplicate that. Uh, as you can see, obviously we got our host stuff in, uh, this is our audio in, and this is out, if I remember rightly. So even though I think, let's have a look, even though it's saying an input, this is actually obviously, well, we, we think of it as out into reason, and this is from reason, even though it says output, because I suppose it is a true output, because we're gonna go and put it into an input, but I suppose at the same time, we think of it as an input from reason. So you've got to get your head around how they sort of word things between the output and the inputs and yeah. I, I understand why they, they, they've worded it the way they have, but sometimes it can just be that little bit confusing. So let's first of all grab some gate data. Um, I must admit, I, I use voltage modular so much and we're, with voltage modular, you can really get away with how you wire certain things up because you can really sort of stack wires on top of wires. And I know with VM, I'm going to get myself a little bit stuck. So let's, um, I don't know, it's going to create any kind of sound, aren't we, for the moment? I don't know what I'm creating. Uh, let's have that out so that I can go into the in. Uh, I'm going to have that controlling that. And I'm going to have that controlling my amp. Well, it's not an amp, it's a mixer, but that's what I want. So that needs to go to my out, which says an input. Um, do I have anything? Oh yeah, I've got my... I actually forgot I had the appagiator thing on then. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this, I think. Um, oh, sorry. I, I zoomed in when I was already zoomed in, so I didn't mean to do that. But anyway, well, you can see a little bit closer what I'm actually up to. Um, let's have a play round and have a see what we've got going with this envelope. I'm going to be going a little bit quiet while I have a little bit of a play around. Pass the filter at the same time. And the answer to that is yes, I can. Well, as we're in Reason, I think the next thing to do is uh, let's quickly go and shove some effects on from uh, within Reason itself. Um, go and grab two of my most favorite effects for something like this. Let's go and grab a reverb and let's grab an echo. So I'm going to pull uh, that wet dry right down, I reckon about there. I'm gonna have it a little bit more decay. Have that up. Um, let's bring that down. 
I'm going to have it quite thick um, in a delay time, I don't know. Yeah, let's try that for the moment. And I'm probably going to have a bit of backy on that. Let's see what we've got now. Now, that's it. So I'm actually um, playing, as you can see, and we've got no sound. This happens every now and then, and you just have to sort of open it up again. And it starts working. It's, uh, I've noticed it's, it's a little bug, um, but once you've got it opened up again, um, once it's opened up, you know, it's, it's absolutely fine. One of the things I really like about um, VCV Rack, obviously you can get your voltage and it shows you exactly what your voltages are going on and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's you can have quite a bit of fun with that sort of thing. So let's uh, bring ourselves an LFO in for that one and that one. And I've got a feeling when you plug into the CV, these become attenuators or when it's like a bit like an attenuator to this. I'm going to dial them up a bit signal coming out of here is going into the minus so we've got to offset it so let's put that so only a positive signal now and let's bring the speed of this right down to something like that i don't know so we might have to just quieten this down a little bit more in a minute let's have a listen <laughs> Okay, that'll do for the moment anyway with what we're just playing with. Um, so as you can see, you know, you can get yourself quite a reasonable sound out of this. Um, I think what would be nice really is, as I say, the downside is, I think, is the, is the lack of I.O. on this particular product. Because um, if I wanted to come along now and create something else, um, ooh, I don't know. Um, See what have we got here? Uh, uh, is that a, is he a drum person? Uh, what have we got here? Oh, I was thinking there, haven't I? There we go. Oh yeah, look, we've got loads of drums, haven't we? Um, so where's my mixer gone? There's my mixer, so I can right click and say duplicate that. I've duplicated that somewhere, don't know where it's gone. It's at the top. The only thing, it sort of puts things willy nilly when you, when you sort of turn your back. Now this is where I think I get caught out, that if I want to put both of these to the out, it doesn't allow me to, yeah. I'm gonna to have to put that out into that in, and then I can take that out and put that into that in, and then I can take that out and put it into another in and uh oh i need some gate data don't i um so okay ourselves a little pattern thing here so i have to take that it says base on it i don't know let's click that on give ourselves some kicks see what we've got um, so we need a clock that could come from the beat and a reset. Mm. I'm not sure what I can use as a reset for the moment, but let's not worry about that. So let's uh, go into reason itself and start. Is that running? I don't think I've got it running. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> Because I've got so much echo on, you can't really hear it, can you? Actually, that's quite, that's quite a nice echo there. You could probably do something with that.
<laughs> yeah, I rather like that. Let's see what else we can build in here. maybe considering the echo on this I wouldn't think I'd um put loads in. Sounds quite off there. Um, let's have a look and see what we've got going on here then. So, So we've got a, a nine pattern going on here. So that's going to really screw up the drums, I think. Um, but I need a nine pattern. So I need a way of resetting these drums. Um, and if I want a nine pattern, so what, uh, surely I should be able to just do that and that should give me a loop of nine because it should hit that ninth one and that should reset it and it should go back to the beginning. But this isn't going to start when everything else starts. So everything's going to be out of sync. Um, and this is where I don't know where to find half the stuff, you see. Uh, reset filter. Is that reset? Yeah, reset the filters. And I want some kind of, I don't know. Let's have a look for the word button and see if there's anything. Uh, we've got ourselves a, like a trigger thing. Trigger, trigger out. Let's have something like that. Trigger out. Oh, so yeah, so this is one of the things that I, annoys me that I can't put them both in to sort of trigger that. It's got to be one or the other. So now I've got to try and come up with something and say, okay, um, are they, are they going to have some kind of multiplexer? Are they going to have it as a merger? What are they going to... What they're going to have it as, and I'm having problems. Right, reset. Um, uh, what kind of logic am I going to? Logic. There we go. Let's try the word logic and see if there's anything there. Oh, we've got some Boolean stuff, so that's probably what we're kind of after. Um, oh, gate. Uh, yeah, okay, let's have a look at this. Let's pull this gate in. Um, if I put that to that, that to that, and that to that. 
that's hopefully set it right to back to the beginning. So that's going to start from step one. We'll hit play. Uh, if I make sure that's back at the beginning. Yeah, as that night at that timing's off, I think my timing's going to be off. Uh, have I moved the screen? Hang on a second. I think my OBS screen might have moved. I don't know. Um, so let's go to players and let's cheat. Let's go and grab something like um, yeah, that would do. Let's grab a compulsion. Why not? And um, let's think about this. Just do the usual trick of going into length to start with. Can I zoom in here? Yep. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key. So let's make everything the same length to start with. And just trying to get my head around what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be playing a note. No, I don't want them. I don't want them actually. And let's cheat and say, what notes am I going to be playing? I'm going to go like, do, 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 do. I'm going to go, do, 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 do. Right, that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to put some things in there. Now I want nine. So, so I'm just trying to calculate this out, what I'm going to do. So let's right put this in first. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I want to go one, two, three. Right, so that's the end. Let me put my marker in. That's 12. Okay, so I'll do a division. I think if I divide it all by 12, the first there, it's not divide it by 12, it's on the 12th step. And the only thing I'm going to do is on number nine, I'm just going to make that length yeah, just slightly under. Okay, he says, okay. So now if we go back and make sure that we're on zero there, we come into here, we hit our reset, everything should be in sync, he says. Oh my god, you hear that sounds terrible, doesn't it? The drums. <laughs> right, I'm gonna add some I'm gonna add a bass I think into this. Um
gonna have this as my base stand. I'm going to grab some of these notes over and nick some of these notes. Let's do, let's do my usual trip of gate to gate, note to note. There we go. And then I can just drag that over and sit that on top of there. Is that around? Oops. Wrong button. Let's switch that around. Oh, we can zoom in. And let's... Um, have a little play with this, shall we? Um, in fact, I'm going to put this onto a pegiator because what I've got coming over is I've got um, two lots of notes coming over, and I'm going to ignore the C note. I'm only interested in this in the in the, um, the slightly higher note. So let's just put same kin very quickly. And I'll work out what I want to do later. Um, oh, I know, 2, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, so I'm going to put that, let me uh, draw a line there. Um, just very quickly, I dirtily hung out. I'm going to put all the notes nice and long just for the moment. Uh, it's going to be an end key, so I just have that slightly shorter, and I want that as a long note, and these as a couple of short notes or something along them lines, I don't know, something like that, and uh, we need to probably come in and change all the octave, uh, all the way down. Um, zoom out, and let's make sure... Okay, I've got to put that to a channel, next to the channel, that one there is it, I think, I don't know, let's find out, let's hit play. Nothing at all, is that because we've got to go into it again? <laughs> Let's get some effects on that. Some saturation.
what we're going to end up adding. We're going to end up adding quite a bit more to this, but um, that will do just for the moment, especially for this <laughs> little session. Um, as I say, I'm going to have a, probably uh, carry on having to play around with it and see what else I can uh, get out of it. But I think you get the idea. Um, sorry for I wasn't actually talking too much while I was going through that. I was just really sort of listening to what was going on and trying to work things out. So um, yeah, so that is Cardinal. I think it's actually is a little bit of fun without a doubt. I mean, the fact that it's totally free um, and you can just sort of plug it in and off you go. As I say, the big downside I really do think is the fact that there's not really uh, enough connectivity um, inside it. Um, yes, we've got all kinds of other parameters we, which we can bring in. Uh, might have to make a bit more use of um, sort of the host sort of stuff coming in. Um, and I know with the VST3 version, they're still developing that, even though it is, uh, there is obviously a version out there. When we get VST3, obviously within reason, my understanding is it's going to be eight in and eight out. Um, I don't know that they had some kind of limitations they were hitting on with VST2, but uh, I do remember Reed saying about that, so that they refer to it as their main version is going to have a lot more in and outs. So that will actually obviously make it so much more usable. But obviously in the meantime, you know, as I say, it's, it's what you get. I mean, there's so many sort of products in here. Um, and as I say, you've got all your different tags and everything. Well, we've got, we've got all these kind of visuals, you know, I love visual stuff. It looks like, oh, it's like we can get sound control in like a tree thing there. I don't know what that is. What's this? Um, oh, I don't know. Um, can I grab this? Can I grab this out here? Uh, that one? Oh, I can go that way. Oh, got something going on there. Not too sure what. Um, so yeah. So yeah, <laughs> go and have yourselves a play. Um, all I'm gonna say is uh, thank you for watching and bye for now. So I've hit that bug again.